Hola, hola guys! So for this video, I will be showing you how I've been successfully traveling internationally with my very large emotional support pet. I've been traveling with Clemente since he was a little tiny baby. Yesterday we landed on our flight number eight. It's not a crazy amount, but it's enough for me to feel confident to give you all the tips and tricks that I picked up along the way. Okay, so the first thing is what's an emotional support pet? I'm just gonna read it straight from the internet. It's a type of animal that provides comfort to help relieve a symptom or effect of a person's disability. So after your therapist, your licensed therapist, this is very important. I know there's websites out there that provide the service of giving you an emotional support letter. Just make sure it's not a scam. Read all the reviews, uh, see how credible they are. Airlines can actually check the license number of your therapist to make sure he's legit. So be careful with that. Well, your therapist will give you this letter. It doesn't have details about what your disability is. It just basically is telling the airline, hey, my patient Mariana needs to travel with Clemente. He is a red standard poodle that weighs 60 something pounds. I'll allow him in the plane, basically. The emotional support pets, are no additional cost. If you have all the documents ready and if you have your emotional support letter, you should not pay anything for the dog. The emotional support animal travels actually with you in the plane. It does not travel on a cage. It either travels with you on your lap or in front of you on the floor in the plane. I divided this video in three, the prep work that you need to do before the flight, and then everything that you do when you arrive to the airport, when you're on the flight, and when you land. And then the last part is just the emotional aspect. I will explain more on that later. <laughs> to research the airlines that will allow you to travel with a large emotional support pet not all airlines let you do this uh, like United has a weight restriction I travel to Mexico most of the times when I travel internationally with Clemente and I've used Volaris and Bivitavus I have no problem with those they do not have a weight and size restriction but even though I've traveled with them in the past before purchasing my ticket, I just double check and read all the regulations and restrictions and rules they have on emotional support pets. If you can afford it, I would recommend 100% purchasing the first row. A lot of times when I actually get to the counter in the airport, I request for them to switch me to the front or I request for them to give me an empty seat if they have any. They were able to move me to the front row, C1A. And this is great because if when you travel with a large dog, a lot of planes are tiny. And if there's people in the same row and you're in the back, there's like no room and it's miserable for your dog and yourself because you're gonna be stressed out. So if there's room in the front row, ask them to do it. I would recommend researching and all of that one month prior to your flight. Why is that? All the airlines that I've traveled with require their rabies vaccine to be administered at least 30 days before your flight. So if you have an emergency flight and you have to go there tomorrow and you're not up to date with the vaccines on your dog, you're screwed because you cannot travel with your pet. So then after you research the airline, you actually need to research the countries that you're traveling to. Every single country. And not only on the way there, the way back. Maybe customs in the country that you will be landing has a additional documentation that the airline didn't request so always check for those there is a great website that I always go to when I'm traveling to a new country with Clemente and it is USDA web page and right the United States Department of Agriculture they have a drop-down menu you can pick the country that you're going to so for example when you go to USDA I pick from the drop down menu Mexico and it tells me all the paperwork up to date of what Mexico requires but I wouldn't stop there I would actually go to the agricultural department each country has a different name for it 
of the country that you're visiting. So in my case, Mexico, it's called Senacica. So I always visit the Senacica website to make sure exactly what documentation they need. In my case, I needed four documents. My emotional support letter, the health certificate for Clemente from a licensed veterinarian. Not all veterinarians do a health certificate, so be aware of that. Then I needed the rabies certificate for my baby, and then I needed all the vaccine record. After I had those four, I made copies of all of them. And take photos of all your documents. Take photos because on my first flight that I traveled with Clemente, they actually kept my emotional support letter and they asked me for it when I landed in Mexico. And I was like, where is it? And thankfully I had the document online, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but it's just a great advice, if I would say so myself, to take a photo of it or just have a digital copy on top of the paper copy. Okay, after you do all your research for documents, do your research for your actual pet. What kind of food are you going to feed your dog? Right now with COVID-19, they actually threw away all the food that I packed for him on my documented bag. So for example, I was lucky and I know that they also have a Petco and they have a very similar food to the one that I was feeding Clemente here. So the change wasn't so abrupt, but if you're going to a country that you're not familiar with, what kind of food you can get him, maybe you can do your research with like a local pet supplier store and see what brands they carry and you can start your pet on that diet now that you have all the legal stuff taken care of you can start packing the bag for your dog i always bring a water container that's one of them the easy walk what's an easy walk is uh, basically like a harness but you have a lot of control with it because he can't just like run off i talked more about it in my favorites video i'm gonna link it down down below and up there so you can check that one out uh, I pack snacks when Clemente was a puppy instead of snacks I actually carried like his teddy bear because he was obsessed with his teddy bear so just you know your dog you know what kind of snacks uh, make him happy so bring those uh, I have never had an issue with bringing a little bit of snacks in my carry-on poop bags and your leash of course his easy walk is already on his leash is right here, ready to go with poop bags. I think we're set. And all his paperwork is already packed. And I know exactly in what compartment of my uh, bag right here. All the papers ready to go. Okay. We're ready, Clemente. We're ready, mi amor. <laughs> my cutie patootie. <laughs> Most of the times travel in the morning. I do not like feeding Clemente right before a trip. He has um, a very sensitive stomach. So what I do is I give him dinner the night before as normal, his walk as normal. And then in the morning, I let Clemente have a long walk to make sure that he goes number one and number two. Then I give him a lot of water. I just make sure that he is really, really well hydrated throughout the whole flight, before the flight. I always get there with a lot of time to spare. If I was traveling myself, I like getting there the last minute, but when you're traveling with a dog, do yourself a favor and get there early, especially right now with COVID-19. Takes more time to check in and ask for the shorter line. All the airlines that I traveled with have a different line that you go to a shorter line when you have an emotional support pet. So make sure to ask for that one. And once you get there, show them all the documents for clemente make sure to let them know that those are copies and they can keep them as you can see in this clip i totally forgot to make copies of the emotional support letter <laughs> right now we're just waiting for the lady to make copies of the letter because i forgot so be diligent and double check all the documents i have like three copies of everything except that one if you arrive with enough time and you're one of the first people to check in then there's a lot more possibilities for them to be able to switch you to a better seat or maybe they can block off the seats next to you that way nobody will sit next to you if possible those are things that i always follow and then in the flight 
that's when the treats really come in handy especially if it's the first time traveling with your dog you want to make sure that he's very comfortable and that he associates traveling with a really fun and calming time so this is where I pull out all the treats and where I'm like constantly trying to make him have a great time okay as soon as we land i ask two things to the first guard or like airport worker that i see i'm like do you guys have like a release uh pee pee section i don't know what the official name is but i'm like is there a place where my dog can pee um uh, can can hold it for a long time but when you land you still have to wait for your bag you have to register your pet you have to go through customs and adding that to the time of the flight plus the time that you were waiting in the airport that's a long time and you want your baby to use the restroom and then you can ask also the guard do i need to register my pet and if you can please point me in the right direction because it's happened to me before that i wait forever for my bags and then i am going through customs and they're like have you register your pet and i'm like no 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 i haven't hmm. so i have to go back and register that takes another like 30 minutes or more if there's another pet before you also going through customs is the same thing they have a shorter line when you have an emotional support pet i always go through the shorter line in mexico and i always go through the shorter line in lax la isla reunión más puntual en México y Centroamérica le damos la bienvenida a todos nuestros clientes en especial a nuestros miembros and for the last aspect of this video and I thought it was honestly the most important one because the main reason for you to get an emotional support pet is for you to feel comfort in your disability when flying and i was not aware of all the attention that i was going to get with my emotional support pet specifically because clemente it's not a very popular breed in mexico a standard poodles are not common there and he's like a little superstar everybody's taking videos of him without asking me everybody's reaching out to touch him without asking me some people do ask and i think it's great people in the u.s know that their emotional support pets but in other countries that emotional support pets are not very popular so they do not know what it is so people are curious like how can you travel with a pet on board they've never seen something like that Clemente. Clemente. Uh -huh. Machito. Machito, sí. Pásale. Es French Pool gigante. French Pool gigante. Uh -huh. Clemente. No, mis hijas se volverían locas just be aware that if you are someone who suffers from social anxiety i would not recommend you getting a large emotional support pet also the more you know your dog the better flat you're gonna have the better bond you're gonna have i know when clement is stressed i know when he's thirsty i know when he's hungry i trust him and the more you trust him the more you're going to have that comfort when you travel having a, a reliable bond with your emotional support pet is not something that you build overnight i've been traveling with clemente for the past two years and only now i feel like fully comfortable and know what i'm doing if you're not sure of how your dog is going to behave take precautions in that matter for example if you're not sure if your dog is going to bite then maybe you can travel with a little muscle oh, i don't know if they're called but i've seen dogs travel with that just to be certain um if you don't want other people to pet your pet then you can travel with one of those vests that say please do not touch my pet pet in service or something like that if you don't know if your pet is going to have a pee pee or poo poo accident then put on a diaper and that way you're not worrying about pee all over the plane try to think of things that might make you nervous and how can you solve them so that your whole uh, flight is smooth as can be anyways i hope that this helped if you guys have any additional questions that i didn't answer in this video just link it down below i am so happy to answer them thank you guys and have a beautiful rest of your day